gonna I'm gonna show you some really pretty quilts and read something to you. This book is by a woman named Jean Ray Laurie. She's very very um, important person in the history of quilts in America and the history of art and textile art because she touched so many parts of the quilt story in the United States and beyond in the in the second half of the 20th century, right? So she's 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 a she's a person of consequence. So keeping it all together, the not just for quilt makers coping book. This is the introduction by Bonnie Lehman, editor, Quilters Newsletter Magazine. How do you find time for quilting in your busy life? How do you get the most out of quilt classes you take, books you read, or shows you see? How do you sustain your creativity? after years of quilting? And how do you grow in your quilt art and craft? How do you do your best work? How do you keep up your energy and your visibility? How do you make the most of your ideas? Keep track of where you're headed as a quilter and where you've been? By asking, talking, looking, listening, writing, taking charge, playing, moving, keeping supplied, and working. Jean Ray Laurie tells us this. Her answers are in the 10 delightful, entertaining, informative chapters reprinted here from her series in Quilter's Newsletter Magazine. Positive and uplifting, this book will encourage and inspire as it teaches. And Jean's insights and experiences presented here are lessons we won't soon forget. Maybe a surprise, maybe a curveball. I'm going to read you the, the, the writing column, Keep Writing. Jean's so good. Her writing is so great. In Van Gogh's paintings, the air always seems full of things. Lines swirl and undulate, suggesting that space is chock full of activity and that it has a life of its own. Surely the air above our own heads must be similarly crammed. Thoughts, ideas, feelings, attitudes, and concerns of unending variety must leak from our brains and dissipate into the air. But not all of them get away. We retain a few, and they emerge through our mouths in conversation. That makes something more real out of these nebulous, vague thoughts. To make them even more real, to make them tangible and concrete, we need to write them down and give evidence of their existence just as friend Vincent did in his paintings. Putting thoughts and ideas into words gives them importance and validity. Dickie Miller, who was in my third grade class, once wrote me a note saying, I love you better than Gloria. How wonderful that note was. Had he just said it, I would have assumed I'd misunderstood. That written note assumed magical properties. I had a totally new view of the written word. Anyone dealing with ideas finds writing a valuable tool. If you are designing, you're dealing with ideas. And if you're making quilts, you're designing. Even if you've never written very much before, start now. Write down what quilts you want to make. Once you commit your wishes or goals or thoughts to the written word, they become more real and accessible. You may find that you are more likely to do the things that you have listed in writing. A quilting journal is a most valuable tool. It can include your responses to shows, reactions to works you've seen, names, dates, and quilters. Perhaps one of the most rewarding kinds of writing is our correspondence with other quilters. We need contact with other people of similar obsessions, and correspondence can provide that in part. Uh, in a show, write a note to the quilter. Isn't that a great idea? It'll be valued even more than the verbal response since she can read it over and over. Then that person can file it away with her I love you better than Gloria collection. She may even write your comments in her journal. It's good stuff, right? Isn't that good? She's really good. Uh -huh.